naši svećenici. Dear brothers priests. Radostan sam. Joyful. Što nas je sve zajedno. That all together. Ovdje okupila blažena. We were gathered here by the blessed Virgin Mary. I sve ono što ćemo slušati. And everything that we would be listening in these days. Everything that we would live in our hearts. Želio bih da bude. I would like that to be. Pod njezinom under her protection. Ovo što ću vam ja govoriti what I'm about to say to you <coughs> what you will hear from others I would not want you to be bothered by that. So in these days in Medjugorje in a special way you would be able to feel in a special way what Mary desires to say to you. Because her words, her love, are above and beyond everything that we can say to each other. I will try, try out of respect and understanding towards interpreters, to speak slowly if I can. And I know that it is not easy to translate and I hope that they will warn me if I speak too fast because it is important to convey the message that you can all understand the message. I will start with a prayer. Interpreters have that prayer as an introduction to this spiritual, ex spiritual retreat. O moj Bože. Oh my God. Kako je divno biti How wonderful it is to be and to dwell in your presence. U tvojoj blizini ne osjećam. How beautiful it is to be in your presence where I do not feel any Kako si sam boredom. How good you are against the soul that seeks for you. Ja te također. I also seek for you, my Lord. I započinje I yearn for you. And I'm starting these spiritual exercises. Before your grace, I wish to raise up and to try so that my priesthood may be filled with love towards you, love towards all those that I was sent to as a priest. In devotion, I wish to spend the spiritual retreat and I want to shape and form every conversation with you in appropriate ways so I would spiritually rise to you. A mighty intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, intercessor and patron patroness of all priests accompany me in that. Amen. Dear brothers priests, I am especially pleased that Arch something that Archbishop just mentioned, that he spoke about a, a priest from ours, and these three things are so significant and are so thoughtful for us priests that I would not say anything right now because he touched the very core, something that is necessary to know about our priesthood. And while he was saying this, I will share an experience with you. <coughs> the experience that comes from a time when I was a student and this is related to what Monsignor was saying. We all studied theology, dear brothers. And when we look at, when we look backwards, those years that we spent when we were studying theology, that is very precious for each one of us. Yes, we need to be intellectually prepared so we would be able to respond to the 
calling of the priesthood. We need to be prepared for that. However, you know that during the time when you study, one can go in the wrong way. And I will give you an example for that. While I was a student, somehow in my heart, I felt, along with the study of theology, I do need something more. We need to be reading the lives of saints and their bio biographies and the doctors of the church. And unfortunately, during the time when we studied, no one encouraged us to do that. And now as a priest, after 17 years of priesthood, I can see that this is very, very needed, along with the Holy Scripture, doctors of the church. It is so important to read and to know about the lives of saints. Because they are the living example, the living image, how we should be living our priesthood. This is something that a theologian cannot teach you about. A theologian who in his wisdom and who in his speech about God, he can also become non-believer. We are witnesses of that today. We see that happening today. And I remember during the time when I studied that it was a professor, one of our professors. He took us students who were reading the lives of saints and he said a sentence that still resounds in my heart. Do you know what he told me? He said, we don't need new priest from ours today. I will say to you once again, we do not need today new priests from ours. What did he want to say by saying that? We need to be open to the modern time. We need to be reading some new theologians. Let go of those old saints who spoke about things that we today cannot use. God forgive me, but it seems that this is driving away, driving me away from devotion because this devotion that the Archbishop beautifully spoke about, for many professors and theologians today, this is something that needs to be rejected. And trust me, already then, as a student, I knew quite well, and now I know much more. After years and years of experiences with priests, I know much more than anything today. We need new priests from ours. If I, and if everyone, each one of you in your own way, if we don't strive to live as new priests from ours, how would the church be renewed then? Who would renew the church today? The church can be renewed by priests only. Priests who live their priesthood just like St. John of Ars in no different way. Modest priests. Humble priests. Priests who are not arrogant. Priests who do not rise up because they wrote several books and priests who know but their hearts is not knocking for the God for God there are those who maybe came to Medjugorje for the first time dear brothers priests so I will mention this to you visionary Miriana here in Medjugorje on one occasion she said how Our Lady told her what she started in Fatima she would complete here in Medjugorje and that her immaculate heart would triumph and that the beginning of the triumph and the triumph is to take place through priests, priests who are the fundament of that triumph. 
Zamislite kako je to divno za nas. Imagine how wonderful and beautiful that is to hear for us as priests. It is a privilege, but it is again a very, very big responsibility. Imagine our Heavenly Mother, our Heavenly Father, who wants to save this world, who wants to save this world through the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she takes as the closest culprit associates us priests personally. When I think about that, I start to be afraid because I feel in my heart how little power I have. What can I do? But a lady desires that from us, that we may be weak, that we may be those who are really, really powerless, that we may be disarmed, that we do not have anything, that we may be like she was, and only then God would be able to enable us to be what he wishes us to be. Dear brothers and priests, this morning I thought in this way, do not take this wrong, but in these days I will not be speaking a lot. About the things that I prepared, because my heart says differently, in my heart I feel I should say, Say this to your brother's priests. This morning I thought, the disciples of Jesus for three years, they were with Jesus in, in his school. And they learned from the best doctor of theology, who is above all of the minds and all of the intellect and all of the professors that are teaching theology all over the world at all of the universities. They had a very doctor of theology who was Jesus. And they were for three years with him. They were listening, they were watching, they were absorbing what he was saying. And after those three years, when their disciple, when their master decided that they should become priests, they should be ordained, it was Holy Thursday institution of the priesthood. After he ordained them, they were all dispersed by one. So when we think about our lives, we completed the study. We became a capable to become priests and to persevere in our priesthood. And we can see how little protected we are. In our minds, when these temptations come, when troubles come, if disciples of Jesus were not able to remain close to their Jesus, how are we going to remain close to, to him today? That is why I would say, my brothers, priests, that we today, we have a trouble choice to decide for our priesthood. We can live our priesthood in, in a way that is really meek, that we just conduct that as a service, that we may steal days, that we may be just disciples were up to the... They're not aware of how beautiful their priesthood is. They are not aware of the power that Jesus, through his priesthood, has given to them. That we may be priests. Everyone is like that. I'm going to be like that. 
we have another choice, brothers, priests. It is the choice that many other holy priests took. is to be priests that are activated from the power of above. That we may become priests like the apostles were after they received the power from above. Because with our own power, we cannot persevere in the priesthood. Jesus says, without me, you cannot do anything. I serve as a secretary for the last six years, my brother's priest. And I can witness to you in my heart breaks that when I see so many priests today, so many young priests today, they're newly ordained priests. Their hearts are cold. And you wonder about the motive. Why did they become priests? We have many processes taking place now. After the year of priesthood, we already send them to Rome. Then they send demands. So he is dissolved from the priesthood that he may receive absolution. He already started, but his heart is very cold. Why does that take place? Because they're not open to the Holy Spirit. Mary is not there because the only warranty today how to maintain our priesthood is for Mary to take me by hand. Without her, I would be lost. And the third thing, the third choice in priesthood, it is... Think about that. You know how Judas was ordained as a priest in a mortal sin. Judas also performed miracles. Maybe he even raised some dead. He did many things in the name of Jesus, but that was not enough. He persevered in his own sin. I cannot even say to you now what, what is in my heart because we can all see that, we can all feel that, but look at what is taking place today in the world. What is it that priests are blessing? What do they do today? I was a word that I read. That even the great priests in the church, with their hands of bishops, their blessing, something that cannot be blessed. Two men come who live in unnatural way of life. And he is a priest and he is a bishop, he blesses them. So I wonder, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? If two unhappy persons come and they ask for the blessing for what is not natural, and I believe that they would fall down if they saw the gaze of Jesus, Jesus would not have to say anything to them. He would probably say, convert, so you would not be destroyed. It's something terrible in the eyes of God. These spiritual retreats, brothers, priests, are heading in the direction, it is the core of the first lecture that we may become aware of how exalted our priesthood is. Saint Ignatius said, the priesthood is most exalted from all of the duties in the created world. From all of the duties in the created world. How sad it is 
to see a priest. How sad it is in my life when something, when I find more time for that than to give myself as a priest that my heart is burning out of love towards Jesus. Today we can see so many priests, it's enough to go to internet. When we see and our heart is breaking, when we see that some priests become like clowns, they celebrate Holy Mass as clowns, they're trying to please people, they make circus in the churches instead of professing the word of salvation what Jesus was saying he is the same that they may profess that with the power of the Holy Spirit that is why we should say there's nothing more precious in this world than to be a priest it is a beauty, but it is such a responsibility. I will read a text to you. Something strange happened to me. A da ovdje, Bogu fala. Mislio sam da sam zaboravio. I thought I forgot it. The lectures that I brought, but I have it here. Sveta Katarina Siena. Saint Catherine of Siena. Meni tako draga svetica. So dear to me. Do you know why? Zato što nitko nije udario po nama svećenicima kao ona. Nobody struck over us priests as she did. Ja volim stroge riječi, oprostite mi ako... I love the strict words and forgive me. Ne govorim samome sebi. Ali ne govorim svoje riječi, nego govorim... I do not say my words, but I will say strictly about the church. Zato što ta strogost nas odgaja... Because that is raising us, it is something cure that is really curing us. There is a book that, if you don't have it, I advise you that in the foreign languages is the translation. But in creation, it is a dialogue about divine providence. The words. It is not her words, but it is something that through her Jesus gave to the priests. So I will read this text. St. Catherine of Siena says this. <coughs> They are my anointed ones because I give them myself so they would surrender me, they would give me to you. It is the dignity that the angels do not have and I gave it to the people that I have chosen as my servants that I have placed to be an angel, to be angels. So they need to be like earthly angels in their lives. In every soul I seek for the purity and I seek for love. But even more for my own servants, I ask them to be pure and to have love towards me and the neighbor so they would share the body and blood of my only son with the fire of love and with the hunger for salvation of your souls, all for the glory and the praise of my name. The saint continues and says this. You know quite well that I wish to bestow graces on them, just that they may be available to receive that grace. 
and you that you may pray for that grace. It is not my will. So they would give you darkness instead of sun. Or that they would be without graces. Or that they may be not pure by living in an impure way. I have set them so they would be earthly angels in the sun to you. Just like I told you, unless they are like that, you need to pray to me for them and not judge them. But leave the judgment to me. And along with your prayers, I will have mercy on them if they want to receive my mercy. And if they don't repair their lives, it would be for a destruction, their destruction, the dignity they have. And if they persevere to the last moment of death, I, high the priest, with a great rebuke, would send them into eternal fire. It is very hard to read these things. And I repeat, but these things can be like a remedy. We know what the Holy Scripture says, that the father and the mother are strict when they raise their child. We priests sometimes need to hear painful truth about ourselves. Not that we would be fighting, that we would be afraid, but that could become like a remedy to us that could encourage us to be better priests, that our hearts may be inflamed for Jesus, that we may have more love. On one occasion, when I was driving to Switzerland, there was a border crossing from Italy to Switzerland. Nobody was there. And you know, if the tax collectors, if the, the tax officers do not have anything to do, so they are kind of, they devote a little bit more time to the person that comes. There were two of us priests. I had some books and I also had some hosts that were not consecrated. I was carrying that to a priest in Switzerland. And they were searching my car for an hour, open this, open that, what is this, what is that? And I was trying really to be patient. So when he saw hosts, I see that he was a little bit afraid and he said, are these consecrated hosts? And I laughed and I said, they're not consecrated. They are about to be consecrated at the altar during the Holy Mass. And then he said, I'm a sacristan in the church, in the Catholic Church. And I thought, if you were a true sacristan, then you would have to know that these are not consecrated hosts when they are packed in a plastic bag. But why do I say this to you? The image of my car being searched is the image of the spiritual re renew renewal. Solitude where we allow God to search our soul a little bit, a little bit more. That our priesthood may be turned a little bit upside down. That it may be shaken. That we may see where we are. Are we really in the true way? Or maybe we have gone from the true way. Maybe we lose our time. Maybe we take our life and as priests we spend it in a way that is not worthy of a priesthood. That is why I wish for this spiritual retreat that we may shaken our, our soul that we may ask certain questions like Our Lady, she counts on us. She wants through us to renew this world.
i dovesti do toga da njezino bez... She wants to bring it to the point that her immaculate heart may triumph. Am I ready for that task? Can I say to Mother Mary, here I am, here I am as a priest. I want to use that. Use me, Mother, for the plans that you have in this church. I want to be the instrument that you would use. So your heart would triumph, your immaculate heart would triumph. Nedavno sam u ruci imao jednu predivnu knjigu koja se zove Vječno sveće. There was a beautiful book that I had called Eternal Priesthood. It was written by the Cardinal Henry Edward Manning. Duhovni pisac. Famous spiritual writer. Said that our priesthood is made of three relationships and we need to be aware of that in fullness. He says the first relationship is the relationship towards Jesus, a great priest. And we have part of that priesthood. It's the source of our holiness. But he is the law that is obliging us. He says how in the Old Testament, when priests once a year would enter, how they needed to be cleansed. Posvećujte se, dakle, da sveti... Be consecrated so that you may be holy, for I am holy. Zamislite kada je za prinošenje tih životinjskih... Imagine when these offerings were offered. Zavjetne... They're just the image of the new... of the offering that Jesus had on the cross. When holiness was required. Kolika veća svetost greater holiness is to be for us priests in the New Testament to be constantly in the relationship with our Jesus to be constantly related to him we could say that the woman who wants to be free today he desires not his holiness he wants to be destroyed. With all of his heart, he needs to long for holiness. We get to our Jesus, we would be cleansed more. This would become similar to him. The the second thing is relationship to our Jesus. This is what the Monsignor Aldo said. It is the image that we may become one when we celebrate the Holy Sacraments. When we celebrate Holy Mass, we need to bring in our minds, it is not me who is saying that, it is Jesus who is saying that. How important it is to bring that to our mind each day. And the third thing what our priest is saying that we may take our priesthood after this close relationship with Jesus needs to be true to the souls that were entrusted to us, to be a person for others, to work on salvation of souls. Evo, 
prilično dugo govorio. I spoke for quite a long time. Vas opteretiti prvi dan. Želio bi za... I want to burden you on, on the first day. Pauza će biti do 11. The break will be until 11 o'clock. A u 11 sati ćemo započeti sklanjanjem. 11 o'clock we... Thank you.